Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, this week's presentation. Uh, Plague Spear and Company is proud to present Timon of Athens. This is our fifth week, uh, so we hope you enjoy our reading this week of Timon of Athens. Oh, good day, sir. I'm glad you're well. I have not seen you long. How goes the world? Oh, it wears, sir, as it grows. Aye, that's well known. But what a particular rarity, what a strange which manifold record not matches. Oh, see, magic of bounty, all these spirits thy power hath conjured to attend. I know the merchant. I know them both. The other's a jeweler. A most incomparable man breathed as it were to an untireable and continuate goodness he passes. I have a jewel here. Oh, pray, let's see it. For the Lord Timon, sir. If he will touch the estimate, uh, but for that. I... When we for recompense have praised the vile, it stains the glory in that happy verse which aptly sings the good. Oh, it is a good form. And rich. Here is water, look you. You are wrapped, sir, in some work, some dedication to the great lord oh a thing slipped idly from me our posy is as a gum which oozes from whence tis nourished the fire in the flint shows not till it be struck our gentle flame provokes itself and like the current flies each bound it chases what have you there a picture sir, sir. A when comes your book forth? Uh, 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 upon the heels of my presentment, sir. Uh, let's see your piece. Uh, uh, tis a good piece. Tis so. This comes off well and excellent. Um, indifferent. Admirable. How oh, this grace speaks his own standing. What a mental power this eye shoots forth. How big imagination moves this lip to the dumbness of the gesture. One might interpret. It is a pretty mocking of the life. Here is a touch, tis good? I will say of it, it tutors nature. Artificial strife lives in these touches, livelier than life. Ah, oh, how this lord is followed. Yeah, oh, the senators of Athens, happy men. Look, more. Mm, you see this confluence, this great flood of visitors. I have in this rough work shaped out a man whom this beneath world doth embrace and hug with amplest entertainment. My free drift halts not particularly, but moves itself in a wide sea of wax. No leveled malice infects one comma in the course I hold, but flies an eagle flight, bold and forth on, leaving no tract behind. <laughs> How shall I understand you? I will unbolt to you. You see all conditions. How all minds, as well of glib and slippery creatures, as of grave and austere quality, tender down their services to Lord Timon. His large fortune upon his good and gracious nature hanging, subdues and properties to his love and tendance all sorts of hearts. Yea, from the glass-faced flatterer to Appomantus, that few things loves better than to abhor himself. Even he drops down the knee before him and returns in peace most rich in Timon's nod. I saw them speak together. Oh, sir, 
I have upon a high and pleasant hill feigned fortune to be thrown. The base of the mount is ranked with all deserts, all kind of natures that labor on the bosom of the sphere to uh, propagate their states. Amongst them all whose eyes are on this sovereign lady fixed, one do I personate of Lord Timon's frame, whom fortune with her ivory hand wafts to her, whose present grace to present slaves and servants translates his rivals. Tis conceived to scope mm. this, this throne, this fortune, and this hill, methinks, with one man beckoned from the rest below, bowing his head against the sleepy mount to climb his happiness would be well expressed in our condition. Uh, uh, nay, sir, but hear me on. All those which were his fellows but of late, some better than his value, on the moment follow his strides, his lobbies are fill with tendons, rain sacrificial whisperings in his ear, make sacred even his stirrup, and through him drink the free air. I, Mary, what of these? Uh, when fortune in her shift and change of mood spurns down her late beloved, all his dependents which labored after him to the mountain's top, even on their knees and hands, let him slip down, not one accompanying his declining foot. Tis common. Mm. A thousand moral paintings I can show that shall demonstrate these quick blows of fortunes more pregnantly than words. Oh. Yet you do well to show Lord Timon that mean eyes have seen the foot above the head. Imprisoned, is he, say you? Aye, my good lord, his five talents in his debt, his means most short, his creditors most straight. Your honorable letter he desires. Do those have him shut up, which failing periods his comfort? Noble Ventidius. Well, I am not of that feather to shake off my friend when he ne must needs me. I do know him a gentleman that well deserves a help, which he shall have. I'll pay the debt and free him. Oh, your lordship ever binds him. Commend me to him. I will send his ransom, and being enfranchised, bid him come to me. Tis not enough to help the feeble up, but to support him after. Fare you well. Oh, all happiness to your honor. Oh, Lord Timon, hear me speak. Well, freely, good father. Thou hast a servant man named Lucullus. Uh, I have so, what of him? Oh, most noble Timon, call the man before thee. A tense here or no, Lucilius. Here, here, at your lordship's service. This fellow here, Lord Timon, this thy creature by night frequents my house. I am a man that from my first have been inclined to thrift, and my estate deserves an heir more raised than one which holds a trencher. Well, what further? One only daughter have I no kin else on whom I may confer what I have got. The maid is fair. I the youngest for a bride, and I have bred her at my dearest cost in the qualities of the best. This man of thine attempts her love, I prithee, noble lord. Join with me to forbid him her resort. Myself have spoke in vain. The man is honest. Therefore he will be time, and his honesty rewards him in itself. It must not bear my daughter. What? Does she love him? Oh, she is young and apt. Our own precedent passions do instruct us what levities in youth. <laughs> love you, the maid? Aye, my good lord, and she accepts of it. If in her marriage my consent be missing, I call the gods to witness. I will choose mine heir from forth the beggars of the world and dispossess her all. How shall she be endowed if she be mated with an equal husband? Three talents on the present, in future all. Hmm. This gentleman of mine hath served me long. To build his fortune I will strain a little, for tis a bond in men. 
Give him thy daughter, and what you bestow in him I'll counterpoise, and make him way with her. Most noble lord, call me to this your honor, she is his. My hand to thee, mine honor on my promise. Humbly I thank your lordship. Never may that state or fortune fall into my keeping, which is not owed to you. Vouchsafe my labor, and long live your lordship. Oh, thank you. You shall hear from me anon. Go not away. Uh, what have you there, my friend? A, a piece of painting, which I do beseech your lordship to accept. Well, painting is welcome. The painting is almost the natural man. For since dishonor traffics with a man's nature, he is but outside. These penciled figures are even such as they give out. I like your work. And you shall find I like it. Wait attendance till you hear further from me. The gods preserve ye. Well, fair you, gentlemen. Give me your hand. We must needs dine together. Uh, sir, your jewel hath suffered under praise. What, what, my lord, my lord, this praise? A mere satiety of commendations. If I should pay you for it as tis extolled, I would unclue me quite. But my lord, tis rated as those which sell would give, but you well know things of like value, differing in the owners, are prized by their masters. Believed, dear lord, you mend the jewel by wearing it. Well mocked. <laughs> no, my good lord, he speaks the common tongue, which all men speak with him. Ah. Look who comes here. Will you be chid? We'll bear with your lordship. He'll spare none. Good morrow to thee, gentle Abimantus. Till I be gentle, stay thou for thy good morrow. When thou art Timon's dog and these knaves honest. Why didst thou call them knaves? Thou knowest them not. Are they not Athenians? Yes. Then I repent not. You know me, Apamantus. Thou, thou knowst I do. I call thee by thy name. But thou art proud, Apamantus. Of nothing so much as that I am not like Timon. <laughs> Whither art thou going? To knock out an honest Athenian's brains. Well, that's a deed thou die for. <laughs> right. If doing nothing be death by the law. How likes thou this uh, picture, Apamantus? The best for the innocents. Well, wrought he not well that painted it? He wrought better that made the painter, and yet he's but a filthy piece of work. Ye are a dog! Well, thy mother's of my generation. What's she if I be a dog? Uh, wilt dine with me, Apimantus? No, I eat not lords. And thou shouldst, thou dost anger ladies. Oh, they eat lords, so they come by great bellies. <laughs> That's a lascivious apprehension. So thou apprehendst it, take it for thy labor. Uh, how dost thou like this jewel, Apimantus? Not so well as plain dealing, which will not cast a man a doit. Now, what dost thou think tis worth? Not worth my thinking. How now, poet? How now, philosopher? Thou liest. Art not one? Yes. Well, then I lie not. Art not a poet? Yes. Then thou liest. Look in thy last work, for thou hast feigned him a worthy fellow. That's not faint. He is so. Yes. He is worthy of thee and to pay thee for thy labor. He that loves to be flattered is worthy of the flatterer. Heavens, that I were a lord. What wouldst thou do then, Apimantus? E'en as Apimantus does now, hate a lord with my heart. What, thyself? I. Wherefore? That I had no angry wit to be a lord. <laughs> Art thou not a merchant? I, Apimantus. Traffic confound thee if the gods will not. If traffic do it, the gods do it. Traffic's thy god, and thy god confounds thee. Trumpets that. Tis Alcibiades and some twenty horse, uh, all of companionship. But pray entertain them, give, us, give them guide to us. Uh, you must needs dine with me. Go not you hence till I have thanked you. Uh, when dinner's done, Show me this piece. I'm joyful of your sights. Most welcome, sir. 
So, so, there. Aches contract and starve your supple joints that there should be small love amongst these sweet knaves and all this courtesy. The strain of man's bred out into baboon and monkey. <laughs> Sir, you have salved my longing, and I feed most hungrily on your sight. Right, welcome, sir. Ere we depart, we'll share a bounteous time and different pleasures. Pray you, let us in. Uh, what time of day is it, Apomantis? Uh, time to be honest. That time serves still. The most accursed thou that still omitst it. Thou art going to Lord Timon's feast. Aye, to see meat fill knaves and wine heat fools. Ah, oh, fare thee well, fare thee well. Thou art fool to bid me farewell twice. Well, why, Appomantus? Shouldst have kept one to thyself, for I meant to give thee none. Hang thyself. No, I will do nothing at thy bidding. Make thy request to thy friend. Away, unpeaceable dog, or I'll spurn thee hence. I will fly like a dog at the heels of the ass. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he's opposite to humanity. Come, shall we in and taste Lord Timon's bounty? He outgoes the very heart of kindness. He pours it out. Plutus, the god of gold, is but his steward. No need but he repays sevenfold above itself. No gift to him, but breeds the giver a return exceeding all use of quittance. The noblest mind he carries that ever governed man. Ah, long may he live in fortunes. Shall we in? I'll keep you company. <clears throat> Most honored Taman. It hath pleased the gods to remember my father's age and calls him to long peace. He is gone happy and has, has left me rich then. As in grateful virtue, I am bound to your free heart. I do return those talents doubled with thanks and service for whose help I derived liberty. Oh, by no means, honest Ventidius. You mistake my love. I gave it freely ever. And there's none can truly say he gives if he receives. If our betters play at that game, we must not dare to imitate them. Faults that are rich are fair. Oh, noble spirit. Nay, but my lord's ceremony was but devised at first to set a gloss on vain deeds, hollow welcomes, recanting goodness, sorry ere tis shown. But where there is true friendship, there needs none. Pray, sit, more welcome are ye to my fortunes than my fortunes to me. My lord, we always have confessed it. Oh, confessed it. Hanged it, have you not? Oh, Appomantus, you are welcome. No, you shall not make me welcome. I come to have thee thrust me out of doors. Five hour to churl. You've got a humor there does not become a man. Tis much to blame. They say, my lords, ira furor bravis est. But yon man is very angry. Go, let him have a table by himself, for he does neither affect company, nor is he fit for it indeed. Let me stay at thine apery of time, and I come to observe and to give thee warning on it. I take no heed of thee. Thou art an Athenian, therefore welcome. I myself would have no power. Prithee, let my meek meat make thee silent. I scorn thy meat, oh, oh, would choke me, for I should ne'er flatter thee. Oh, you gods, what a number of men eats Timon, and he sees them not. It grieves me to see so many men dip their meat in one man's blood, and all the madness is he cheers them up too. I wonder men dare trust themselves with men. Methinks they should invite them without knives, good for their meat and savor for their lives. There's much example for it. The fellow that sits next to him now parts bread with him, pledges the breath of him in a divided draught, is the readiest man to kill him. That has been proved. If I were a huge man, I should fear to drink at meals, lest they spy my windpipe's dangerous notes. Great men should drink with a harness on their throats. My lord, in heart, and let the health go round. Oh, let it flow this way, my good lord. <laughs> flow this way? 
Ah, <laughs> brave fellow. He keeps his tides well. Those healths will make thee and thy state look ill, Timon. Here's that <clears throat> which is too weak to be a sinner. Honest water, which ne'er hath left the man in the mire. This and my food are equals. There's no odds. Feasts are too proud to give thanks to the gods. <clears throat> Immortal gods, I give no pelf. I pray for no man but myself. Grant, I may never prove so fond to trust man on his oath or bond, or a harlot for her weeping, or a dog that seems a-sleeping, or a keeper with my freedom, or my friends if I should need them. Amen, so fall to it, rich men sin, and I eat root. <laughs> mm, mm. Oh, what would ditch thy heart, Epimantus? Oh, oh. Captain Alcibiades, your heart's in the field now. My heart is ever at your service, my lord. You would rather be at a breakfast of enemies than a dinner of friends. Hmm? So they were bleeding new, my lord. There's no meat like them. I could wish my best friends at such a feast. Would all these flatterers were thine enemies then? Then thou mightst kill them and bid me to them. Why do we have that happiness, my lord, that you would once use our hearts whereby we might express some part of our zeals? We should think ourselves forever perfect. Oh, no doubt, my good friends, but the gods themselves have provided that I shall have much help from you. How had you been my friends else? Why have you that charitable title from thousands? Did not you chiefly belong to my heart? I have told more of you to myself than you can with modesty speak in your own behalf. And thus far I confirm you. Oh, you gods, think I, what need we have any friends if we should ne'er have need of them? They were the most needless creatures living should we ne'er have use for them and would most resemble sweet instruments hung up in cases that keeps their sounds to themselves. Why, I have often wished myself poor, that I might come nearer to you. We are born to do benefits, and what better or proper can we call our own than the riches of our friends? But what a precious comfort it is to have so many like brothers commanding one another's fortunes. Oh, joys, e'en made away ere it can be born. Mine eyes cannot hold out water, methinks. To forget their faults, I drink to you. Thou weeps to make them drink, Timon. Joy had the like conception in our eyes, and at that instant, like a babe sprung up. Oh, oh I like to think that babe a bastard. Oh, I promise you, my lord, you moved me much. Much. Flavius. My lord. That, uh, the little casket, uh, bring me hither. Yes, my lord. More jewels yet. <laughs> there is no crossing him in his humor, else I should tell him what in faith I should. When all spent, he'll be cross then, and he could. <sighs> Tis pity Bounty had not eyes behind, that man might ne'er be wretched for his mind. Where be our men? Here, my lord, in readiness. Our horses. Oh, my, oh, my friends, I have one word to say to you. Uh, look you, uh, my good lord, I must entreat you honor me so much as to advance this jewel. Accept it and wear it, kind my lord. I am so far already in your gifts. Mm. Oh. So are we all. Are we all? <laughs> <laughs> my lord, there, there are certain nobles of the Senate newly alighted and come to visit you. Oh, they are fairly welcome. I beseech your honor, vouchsafe me a word it does concern you near. <clears throat> near? Why, why then another time I'll hear thee. I prithee, let's be provided to show them entertainment. <clears throat> There's no how. May it please your honor, Lord Lucius, out of his free love, both presented to you four milk-white horses, trapped in silver. Oh, I shall accept them fairly. Let the presents be worthily entertained. Uh, please.
crave you, my lord, that honorable gentleman Lord Lothulith entreats your company tomorrow to hunt with him and has sent your honor to the race of greyhounds. Oh, I'll hunt with him and let them be received, not without fair reward. What will this come to? He commands us to provide and give great gifts and all out of an empty coffer? Nor will he know his purse or yield me this to show him what a beggar his heart is, being of no power to make his wishes good. His promises fly so beyond his state that when he speaks is all in debt he owes for every word. He is so kind that he now pays interest for it. His lands put in their books, well, would I were gently put out of office before I were forced out. Happier is he that has no friend to feed than such that do e'en enemies exceed. I bleed inwardly for my lord. You do yourselves much wrong. You bait too much of your own merits. Here, my lord, a, a trifle of our love. Oh, what more than common thanks. I will receive it. He's <laughs> oh, the very soul of bounty. Uh, and now I remember, my lord, you gave good words the other day of a bay courser I rode in on. Tis yours because you liked it. Oh, I beseech you pardon me, my lord, in that. Oh, you may take my word, my lord. I know no man can justly praise but what he does affect. I'll, I'll weigh my friend's affection with mine own. I tell you true, I'll call to you. Oh, oh none so, so welcome. So welcome. <laughs> I take all and your several visitations so kind to heart. Tis not enough to give. He thinks I could deal kingdoms to my friends and ne'er be weary. Alcibiades, thou art a soldier, therefore seldom rich and come it comes in charity to, to thee for all thy living is amongst the dead and all the lands thou hast lie in a pitched field aye defiled land my lord we are so virtuously bound and so am i to you mm, and so in, in infinitely endeared <laughs> all to you lights more lights the best of happiness honor and fortunes keep with you lord diamond Ready for his friends. The coils here, serving of becks and jutting out of bums. I doubt whether their legs be worth the sums that are given for them. Friendship's full of dregs. Methinks false hearts should never have sound legs. Thus, honest fools lay out their wealth on curtsies. Now, Abimantus, if thou wert not sullen, I would be good to thee. No, I'll nothing, for if I should be bribed too, there would be none left to rail on thee. And then thou wouldst sin the faster. Thou give so long time, and I fear me, thou wilt give away thyself in paper shortly. What needs these feasts, pops, and vain glories? Nay, and you begin to rail on society once, I am sworn not to give regard to you. Farewell, and come with better music. So, thou wilt not hear me now thou shalt not then i'll lock thy heaven from thee oh that men's ears should be to counsel death but not to flattery in late five thousand tomorrow and his adorios nine thousand besides my former son which makes five and twenty Still in motion of raging waste, it cannot hold. It will not. If I want gold steel, but a beggar's dog can give it a time, and why the dog coins gold? And if I send my horse <laughs> to buy twenty more better than he, why give my horse to time? And ask nothing, give it him. It fools me straight and able horses. No porter at his gate, but rather one that smiles and still invites. Ah, oh, that passed by. It cannot hold. No reason. Cannot state in his safety. Oh, Kyphus! Kyphus, ho! Kyphus, I say! Here, sir, what is your pleasure? You send your cloak in haste to Lord Timon. Importune him for my monies. Be not ceased with slight denial, nor in silence to in Commend me to your master, and then Cap plays right hand thus. But tell him, my uses cry to me, I must serve my turn of mine own. I love and honor him, but must not break my back to heal his finger. 
but on the most importune aspect, a visage of demand, for I do fear when every feather sticks his own wing, Lord Tymon will be left a naked girl, which flashes now a phoenix. Get you gone. Oh, I go, sir. No care, no stop, so senseless of expenses that he will neither know how to maintain it nor cease the flow of riot. Takes no account how things go from him, nor resumes no care of what is to continue. Never mind that was to be so unwise, to be so kind. What shall be done? He will not hear till feel. I must be round with him. Now, now, he comes from hunting. Oh, oh, fight, fight, fight. Good even, Varro. What, 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 you come for money? It's not your business, too? Oh, it is. And yours, too, Isidori? It is so. Oh, would we were all discharged. Mm, I fear it. Well, here comes the Lord. So soon as dinner's done, we'll forth again, my Alcibiades. With me, what's your will? Oh, my lord, here is a note of certain dues. Dues? Uh, whence are you? Of Athens, here, my lord. Oh, go to my steward. Please it, your lordship, he hath put me off to the succession of new days this month. My master is awaked by great occasion to call upon his own and humbly praise you that with your other noble parts you'll suit in giving him his right. Mine honest friend, I prithee, but repair to me next morning. Oh, nay, good, my lord. Contain thyself, good friend. Uh, uh, one Vero's servant, my good lord. From Isidore, he humbly prays your speedy payment. If you did not, if you did know, my lord, my master's want. Uh, it was due on forfeiture, my lord, uh, six weeks and past. Your steward puts me off, my lord, and I am sent expressly to your lordship. Give me breath. I do beseech you, good my lords, keep on. I'll wait upon you instantly. <laughs> Come hither. Pray you, how goes the world that I am thus encountered with clamorous demands of debt, broken bonds, and the detention of long since due debts against mine honor? <laughs> Please you, gentlemen, the time is unagreeable to do this business. Your importunity cease till after dinner, that I may make his lordship understand wherefore you are not paid. Do so, my friends. See them well entertained. Pray you draw near. Stay, stay, here comes the fool with Appomantis. Let's, let's have some sport with him. I'll hang him, he'll abuse us. A plague upon him, dog. How dost, fool? Best dialogue with thy shadow. I speak not to thee. No, tis to thyself. Come away. There's the fool hangs on your back already. No, thou stand'st single, thou art not on him yet. Where's the fool now? He asked last asked the question. Poor rogues and usurers, men, bods between gold and want. What are we? What are we, Apamantus? What are we? Asses? Mm. Why? Why? That Why? you ask me what you are and do not know yourselves. Speak to him, fool. <clears throat> how do you do, gentlemen? Oh. Grammarcy's. Grammarcy's. Fool, Grammarcy's. How does your mistress? Does. Uh, she's eaten sitting on water to scald such chickens as you are. Would we could see you at Corinth. Good Grammarcy. <laughs> Look you, here comes my master's page. Oh, uh, how now, Captain? With you in this wise company. Oh, how dost thou, Appamantus? Would I had a rod in my mouth that I might answer thee profitably? Pretty, Appamantus. Bring me the subscription of these letters. I not know which is which. Canst thou not read? No. Ah, there will be little learning die that day thou art hanged. Uh, this is to Lord Timon. This to Alcibiades, go. Thou wast born a bastard, and thou die a bawd. 
<laughs> now we'll smell the dog and now so famous the dog's this. Ain't you not? Ian so thou art run grace. Fool, I will go with you to Lord Timon's. Will you leave me there? Timon stay at home. You serve three usurers? Usurers? I would I serve us. us. I have served us. So would I, as good a trick as ever hangman served thief. Are you three usurers men? I, I, yes, I, I think I think no usurer but has a fool to his servant. My mistress is one and I am her fool, but men come to borrow of your masters. They approach sadly and go away merry, but they enter my master's house merrily and go away sadly. <laughs> the reason of this? Oh, I can render one. <laughs> Do it then that we may account thee a whore master and a name which notwithstanding thou shalt be no less esteemed. What is a whore master, fool? A fool and fool go in, in good clothes and something like thee mm. is a spirit. It sometimes appears uh, like a, a lord, sometimes like a lawyer, sometimes like a philosopher with two stones more than its artificial one. He is very often like a knight and generally in all shapes that man goes up and down in from four score to 13, this spirit walks in. <laughs> thou art not altogether a fool. Nor thou altogether a wise man. As much foolery as I have, so much wit thou lackst. Mm -hmm. That answer might have become Epimantus. <laughs> aside, aside, here comes Lord, Lord Timon. Lord Timon. Lord Timon. Hmm. Ah, come with me, fool. Come. I do not always follow lover, elder brother, and woman, sometime the philosopher. Pray you, walk near, I'll speak with you anon. Make me marvel wherefore ere this time had you not fully laid my state before me that I might so have rated my expense as I have le had leave of means. You would not hear me at many leisures, I proposed. Go to, perchance some single vantages you took when my indisposition put you back and that unaptness made your minister thus to excuse yourself. Oh my good Lord, at many times I brought you in my accounts, laid them before you. You would throw them off and say you found them in mine honesty. <laughs> when for some trifling present you had bid me return so much, I have shook my head and wept. Yea, against the authority of manners prayed you to hold your hand more close. I did endure not seldom nor no slight checks when I have prompted you in the ebb of your estate and your great flow of debts. My loved Lord, though you hear now too late, yet now's a time the greatest of your having lacks a half to pay your present debts. Let all my land be sold. It is all engaged, some forfeited and gone, and what remains will hardly stop the mouth of present dues. The future comes apace. What shall defend the interim? And at length, how goes our reckoning? To Lacedaemon did my land extend. Oh my good Lord, the world, the world is but a word. Were it all yours to give in a breath, how quickly were it gone? You tell me true. If you suspect my husbandry or falsehood, call me before the exactest orders and set me on the proof so the gods bless me. When all our offices have been oppressed with riotous feeders, when our vaults have wept with drunken splith of wine, with every room hath blazed with lights and braid with minstrelsy, I have retired me to a wasteful cock and set mine eyes at flow. Pretty no more. Heavens, have I said the bounty of this Lord? How many prodigal bits have slaves and peasants this night in glutted? Who is not Timon's? Whose heart, head, sword, force means, but is Lord Timon's great Timon, noble, Worthy, royal Timon. Ah, but when the means are gone that by this praise, the breath, is, the breath is gone, wherefore this praise is made. Feast won, feast lost. One cloud of winter showers, these flies are couched. Come sermon me no further. No villainous bounty yet hath passed my heart. Unwisely, not ignobly have I given. Why dost thou weep? Canst thou the conscience lack to think I shall lack friends? Secure thy heart. If I would broach the vessels of my love and try the argument of hearts by borrowing men and men's fortunes, could I frankly use as I could bid thee speak? Assurance, bless your thoughts. 
And in some sort, these wants of mine are crowned that I account them blessings. For by these shall I try friends. You shall perceive how you mistake my fortunes. I am wealthy in my friends. Within there, Fl Flaminius, Servilius. Uh, my lord? My lord. My lord. I will, I will dispatch you severally. You to Lord Lucius. You to Lord Lucullus, you, I hunted with his honor today. You to Sempronius, commend me to their loves, and I am proud, say, that my occasions have found time to use them toward a supply of money. Let the request be 50 talents. As you have said, my lord. Lord Lucius and Lucullus. <laughs> to you, sir, go to. No, go you, sir, to the senators, of whom even to the state's best health I have deserved this hearing. Bid him send to the instant a thousand talents to me. I have been told to them to use your signet and your name, but they do shake their heads, and I am here no richer in return. It's true? Can't be? They answer in a joint and corporate voice that now they are at fall. Want treasure cannot do what they are, would they are sorry? <laughs> you are honorable, but yet... They could have wished they know not, and so intending other serious matters after distasteful looks and these hard fractions with half certain half caps and cold moving nods, they froze me into silence. You gods reward them. A pretty man, look cheerly. These old fellows have their ingratitude in them hereditary. Go to Ventidius. Prithee, be not sad. Thou art true and honest. Ingeniously I speak, no blame belongs to thee. Ventidius lately buried his father, by whose death he's stepped into a great estate. When he was poor, imprisoned, and in scarcity of friends, I cleared him with five talents. Read him from me, bid him suppose some good necessity touches his friend, which craves to be remembered with those five talents. That had, give these fellows to whom tis instant due. Never speak or think that Timon's fortunes amongst his friends can sink. What I could not think, that thought his bounty's foe being free itself, it thinks all others so. I've told my lord of you, he's coming down to you. I thank you, Thura. He is my lord. Oh, one of Lord Timon's men, a gift, I suppose. Why, this hits right. I, I, I dreamt of a silver basin and you are tonight. Flaminius! <laughs> ah, Flaminius, you are very respectfully welcome, sir. Fill me some wine. Ah, and how does that honorable, complete, free-hearted gentleman of Athens, the very bountiful good lord and master? Uh, his health is well, sir. <laughs> ah, I am right glad that his health is well, sir, and what has Thou there, uh, under thy cloak? Uh, faith, <laughs> faith, nothing but an empty box, sir, which in oh. my lord's behalf I come to entreat your honor to supply, who, having great and instant occasion to use 50 talents, hath sent your lordship to furnish him nothing, not doubting your present assistance therein. Oh, la, 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 nothing doubting, says he, <laughs> alas. Good Lord, a noble gentleman tis if he would not keep so good a house. Many a time and often have I dined with him and told him on it and come again to supper to him of purpose to have him spend less. And yet he would embrace no counsel, take no warning of my, by my coming. Every man has his fault and honesty is his. I had told him on it, but I could never get him from it. <laughs> Please, your, lord, your lordship, here is the wine. Ah, <clears throat> Flaminius, I have noted thee always wise. Here's to thee. Your lordship speaks to pleasure. <laughs> I have observed thee always for a towardly prompt a spirit. Give thee thy due. and one that knows what belongs to reason and canst use the time well, if the time use thee well. Good parts in thee. Get, get you gone, Sirrah. 
<sighs> Draw near, honest Flaminius. Hmm? <laughs> thy lord's a bountiful gentleman, but thou art wise and thou knowest well enough that this is no time to lend money, especially upon bare friendship without security. Ah, here's three solidaries for thee, good boy. Wink at me <laughs> and say that thou sawest me not. Bear thee well. It's possible the word world should suffer so much differ? And we alive that lived? Fly, damned baseness to him that worship thee! <laughs> now, now I see that thou art a fool and fit for thy master. And may these add to the number that may scald thee. Let molten cord be thy damnation. Thou that thee though a friend and not himself, hath friendship not a faint and milky heart? It turns less than two nights. Oh, you gods. I feel my master's passion. The slave unto his honor, my lord hath meeten him. Why should he thrive to turn nutriment when he hath turned to poison? Oh, may the thief his only work upon. <laughs> and when he's sick to death, let the not the part of nature which my lord paid for be any power to expel sickness but prolong this hour. Who? Thy lord, Timon? He is my very good friend and an honorable gentleman. Oh, we know him for no less, though we are but strangers to him. But I can tell you one thing, my lord, and which I hear from common rumors. Now Lord Diamond's happy hours are done and past, and his estate shrinks from him. Fie, no. Do not believe it. He cannot want for money. Uh, but believe you this, my lord, that not long ago one of his men was with the Lord Lucullus to borrow so many talents, nay, urged extremely for it, and showed what necess necessity belonged to it, and yet was denied. How? I tell you, denied, my lord. <laughs> what a strange case was that. Now before the gods, I am, I am ashamed on it. Denied that honorable man. There, were, there was very little honor showed in it. For my own part, I must needs confess. I have received some small kindnesses from him as money, uh, plates, jewels, and such like trifles, uh, uh, nothing comparing to his, uh, yet he, had he mistook him and sent to me, I should ne'er have denied his occasion so many times. <laughs> see, by good hap, yonder's my lord. I have sweat to see his honor, my honored lord. Servilius, you are kindly met, sir. Fare thee well, commend me to thy honorable, virtuous lord, my very exquisite friend. May it please your honor, my lord hath sent me to- What has he sent? I am so much endeared to that lord he's ever sending. How shall I thank him, thinkst thou? And what has he sent now? Has only sent his present occasion now, my lord, requesting your lordship to supply his instant use with so many talents. Uh -huh. I know his lordship is but merry with me. He cannot want 5,500 talents. But in the meantime, he wants less, my lord. If his occasion were not virtuous, I should not urge it half so faithfully. Dost thou speak seriously, Servilius? Upon my soul, tis true, sir. What a wicked beast was I to disfurnish myself against such a good time when I might have shown him, shown myself honorable. Ugh, how unluckily it happened that I should purchase the day before for a little part and undo a great deal of honor. Sir Vilius, now, uh, before the gods, I, I am not able to do the more beast, I say. I was sending to use Lord Diamond myself. These gentlemen can, attack, can witness, but I would not, for the wealth of Athens I had done it now. 
commend me bountifully to his good lordship, and I hope his honor will conceive the fairest of me, because I have no power to be kind. And tell him this from me, I count it one of my greatest afflictions, say that I cannot pleasure such an honorable gentleman. Good Sir Villiers, will you befriend me so far as to use mine own words to him? Yes, sir, I shall. I'll look you out a good turn, Sir Villiers. True, as you said, Timon has, is shrunk indeed, and he that was once denied will hardly speed. Do you observe this, Hostilius? <laughs> Why, this is the world's soul, and just of the same piece as every flatterer sport. Who can call him his friend that dips in the same dish? For in my knowing, Timon has been this lord's father and kept his credit with his purse, supported his estate. Nay, Timon's money has paid his men their wages. He ne'er drinks but Timon's silver treads upon his lip. And yet, oh, see the monstrousness of man when he looks out in an ungrateful shape. He does deny him in respect of his what charitable men afford to beggars. Religion groans at it. For mine own part, I never tasted Timon in my life, nor came any of his bounties over me to mark me for his friend. Yet I protest, for his right noble mind, illustrious virtue in honorable carriage, had his necessity made use of me, I would have put my wealth into donation, and the best half should have returned to him so much I love his heart. But I perceive men must learn how with pity to dispense, for policy sits above conscience. <sighs> must he needs trouble me and him, <laughs> of all others? He might have tried Lord Lucius or Lucullus, and now Ventidius is wealthy too, whom he redeemed from prison. All these owes their estates unto him. My lord, they have all been touched and found base metal, for they have all denied him. Oh, have they denied him? <laughs> Has Ventidius and Lucullus denied him, and does he send to me three? <laughs> it shows but little love or judgment in him. Must I be his last refuge? His friends, like physicians, thrive, give him o'er. Must I take the cure upon me? Has much disgraced me in time? Angry at him that might have known my place. I see no sense for it, but his occasions might have wooed me first, for in my conscience I was the first man that e'er received gift from him. Does he think so backwardly of me now that I'll requite it last? No! <laughs> so it may prove an argument of laughter, the rest in monks' lords I be thought a fool. I'd rather than the worth, uh, the, the worth of thrice the sum had said to me first, but for my mind's sake, I'd such a courage to do him good. But now, return, and with their faint reply this answer join, who baits mine honor shall not know mine coin. Excellent. Your lordship's a goodly villain. The devil knew not what he did when he made man politic. He crossed himself by it. And I cannot think, but in the end, the villainies of man will set him clear. How fairly this lord strives to appear foul takes virtuous copies to be wicked, like those that under hot ardent zeal would set whole realms on fire. Of such a nature is his politic love. This was my Lord's best hope. Now all are fled, save only the gods. Now his friends are dead, doors that were never acquainted with their wards. Many a bounteous year must be employed now to guard, sure their master. And this is all a liberal course allows. Who cannot keep his wealth? must keep his house. Uh, well met, good morrow, Titus and Hortensius. The like to you, kind Vero. Lucius, what, do we meet together? Aye, and I think one business does command us all, for mine is money! <laughs> so is theirs and ours. And Sir Fordis too. 
Ah, uh, good day at once. <laughs> Welcome, good brother. What do you think the hour? Laboring for nine. So much. It's not my lord seen yet. No, not yet. I wonder on he was wont to shine at seven. Aye, but the days are wax shorter with him. You must consider that a prodigal course is like the sun's, but not like his recoverable, I fear. Mm. His deepest winter in Lord Timmons' purse. That is, one may reach deep enough and yet fine little. I am of your fear for that. I'll show you how to observe a strange event. Your Lord sends now for money. Most true, he does. And he wears jewels now of Timon's gift, which for which I wait for money. It is against my heart. Mark how strange it shows. Timon in this should pay more than he owes, and even if your lord should wear rich jewels and send money for him. I, I am weary of this charge. The gods can witness. I know my lord hath spent of Timon's wealth, and now ingratitude makes it worse than stealth. Yes, mine's 3,000 crowns. What's yours? 5,000 mine. Tis much deep, and it should seem by the sum your master's confidence was above mine, else surely his it equaled. One of Lord Timon's men. Pominius, sir, a word, pray, is my lord ready to come forth? Uh, no, he is not. Uh, we attend his lordship, pray signify so much. I need not tell him that. He knows you are too diligent. Ah, is not that his steward muffled so? He goes away in a cloud. Call him! Call him! Uh, do, you, do you hear, sir? By your leave, sir! What do you, at, what do you ask of me, my friend? Uh, we wait for certain money here, sir. Aye. <clears throat> if money were as certain as you're waiting, t'were sure enough. Why then preferred you not your sums and bills when your false masters eat at my lord's meat? And then they could smile and fawn upon his debts and take down the interest in their gluttonous maws. You do yourselves but wrong to stir me up. Let me pass quietly. Believe it, my lord and I have made an end. I have no more to reckon, he to spend. Nay, but this answer will not serve. If twill not serve. Tis not so base as you, for you are you serve knaves. Oh, what does his cashiered worship mutter? No matter what, he's poor, and and that's revenge enough. Who can speak broader than he that has no house to put his head in? Such may rail against great buildings. Oh, here's Servilius. Now we shall know some answer. If I might beseech you, gentlemen, to repair some other hour, I should derive much from it. For take of my soul, my lord leans wondrously to discontent. His comfortable temper hath forsook him. He is much out of health and keeps his chamber. Well, many do keep their chambers are not sick. And if it be so far beyond his health, methinks he should the sooner pay his debts and make a clear way to the gods. Good gods. We cannot take this for an answer, sir. Servilus, help, my lord, my lord. What are my doors opposed against my passage? Have I ever, have I been ever free? And must my house be my retentive enemy, my jail? The place which I have feasted does it now, like all mankind, show me an iron heart. Put in now, Titus. My lord, here is my bill. Here is mine. And mine, my lord. And, and ours, ours, my lord. All our bills. Dock me down with them, cleave me to the girdle. Alas, my lord. Cut my heart in sums. Mine, 50 talents. Yeah, tell out my blood. 5,000 crowns, my lord. 5,000 drops pays that. What's yours? Oh, yours. Uh, my lord. My lord. My, my lord. Tear, tear me, take me, and the gods fall upon you. Faith, I perceive our masters may throw their caps at their money. These debts may well be called desperate ones for a madman owes them. 
have e'en put my breath from me, the slaves, creditors, devils. My dear Lord. What if it should be so? My Lord. I'll have it so, my steward. Here, my Lord. So fitly, go bid all my friends again, Lucius, Lucullus, and Sempronius, all once more. I'll feast the rascals. Oh, my lord, you only speak from your distracted soul. There's not so much left to furnish out a moderate table. Be it not in thy care, go, I charge thee. Invite them all, and let the tide of knaves once more. My cook and I'll provide. My lord, you have my voice to it. The fault's bloody. Tis necessary he should die. Nothing emboldened sin so much as mercy. Most true, the law shall bruise them. Honor, health, and compassion to the Senate. Now, Captain. I am a humble suitor to your virtues, for pity is the virtue of the law, and none but tyrants use it cruelly. It pleases time and fortune to lie heavy upon a friend of mine, who in hot blood hath stepped into the law, which is past depth to those that without he do plunge into it. He is a man, setting his fate aside, of comely virtues, nor did he soil the fact with cowardice and honor in him, which buys out his fault. But with a noble fury and fair spirit, seeing his reputation touched to death, he did oppose his foe. And with such sober and unnoted passion, he did behoove his anger ere twas spent as if he had but proved an argument. You undergo too strict a paradox, striving to make an ugly deed look fair. Your words have took such pains as if they labored to bring manslaughter into form and set quarreling upon the head of valor, which indeed is valor misbegot and came into the world when sects and factions were newly born. He's truly valiant that can wisely suffer the worst that man can breathe and make his wrongs, his outsides, to wear them like his raiment carelessly and ne'er prefer his injuries to his heart, to bring it into danger. If, he, if wrongs be evils and enforce us kill, what folly it is to hazard life for ill. My Lord. You cannot make gross sins look clear. To revenge is no valor but to bear. My lords, then under favor, pardon me if I speak like a captain. Why do fond men expose themselves to battle and not endure all threats? Sleep upon it and let the foes quietly cut their throats without repugnancy. If there be such valor, valor in the bearing, what make we abroad? Why then women are more valiant that stay at home if bearing carry it. And the ass more captain than the lion the fellow loaden with irons, wiser than the judge. If wisdom be in suffering, oh, my lords, as you are great, be pitifully good. Who cannot condemn rashness in cold blood? To kill, I grant, is sin extremist gust, but in defense by mercy, tis most just. To be in anger is impiety. But who is man that is not angry? Weigh but the crime with this. You breathe in vain. <laughs> in vain. His service done at Lacedaemon and Byzantium were sufficient briber for his life. What's that? Why, I say, my lord, has done fair service and slain in fight many of your enemies. How full of valor did he bear himself in the last conflict and made plenteous wounds. He has made too much plenty with them. He's a sworn rioter. He is a sin that often drowns him and takes his valor prisoner. If there were no foes that were enough to overcome him, in that beastly fury he has been known to commit outrages and cherished factions, which is interred to us, his days are foul and his drink dangerous. He dies. <sighs> Hard fate. He might have died in war, my lords, if not for any parts in him, though his right arm might purchase his own time, and be in debt to none, yet more to move you, take my deserts to his and join them both. And for I know your reverend age's love security, 
I'll pawn my victories, all my honor to you upon his good returns. If by this crime he owes the law his life, why, let the war receive it in valiant gore, for law is strict and war is nothing more. We are for law. He dies. Urge it no more on height of our displeasure. Friend or brother, he forfeits his own blood that spills another. Must it be so? It must not be, my lords, I do beseech you. You know me. How? Call me to your remembrances. What? I cannot think but your age forgot me. I could not else be I should prove so base to sue and be denied such common grace. My wounds ache at you. Do you dare our anger? Tis in few words but spacious in effect. We banish thee forever. Banish me? Banish your dotage. Banish usury that makes the Senate ugly. If after two days shine Athens contain thee, attend our way to your judgment, and not to swell our spirit, he shall be executed presently. Now the gods keep you old enough that you may live only in bone, that none may look on you. I'm worse than mad. I have kept back their foes while they have told their money and let out their corn, uh, coin upon largest interest. I myself rich only in large hurts. All those for this. Is this the balsam that usuring senate pours into captain's wounds? Banishments. It comes not ill. No. I hate not to be banished. It is a cause worthy my spleen and fury that I may strike at Athens. I'll cheer up my discontented troops and lay for hearts. Tis honor with most lands to be at odds. Soldiers should brook as little wrongs as gods. A good time of day to you, Sam. Ah, I also wish it to you. Uh, I think this honorable lord did but try us the other day. Upon that were my thoughts tiring upon when we encountered. I hope it is not so low with him as he made it seem in the trial of his several friends. It should not be by thy persuasion of his new feasting. I should think so. He hath sent me an earnest inviting which many my near occasions did urge me to put off, but he hath conjured me beyond them, and I must needs appear. In like manner was I in debt uh, to my importunate business, but he would not hear my excuse. I am sorry when he sent to borrow of me that my provision was out. I am sick of that grief too, mm. as I understand how all things go. Every man hears so. What, what would he have borrowed of you? A thousand pieces. A thousand pieces? What of you? Well, he said to me, sir. Uh, uh, <clears throat> here, here he comes. With all my heart, gentlemen both. And how fare you? Ever at the best, hearing well of your lordship. The swallow follows not summer, more willing than we your lordship. Nor more willingly leaves winter, such summer birds are men. <clears throat> Gentlemen, our dinner will not recompense this long stay. Feast your ears with the music while, if they will fare so harshly of the trumpet sound, we shall to it presently. I hope it remains not unkindly with your lordship that I returned you an empty messenger. Oh, sir, let it not trouble you. Oh, my noble lord. Ah, my good friend, what cheer? Ah, uh, my most Honorable Lord, I am sick of shame that when your Lordship this other day sent to me, I was so unfortunate a beggar. Oh, think not on, sir. If you had sent but two hours before. Let it not cumber your better remembrance. Come, bring it all together. Uh, oh, all covered dishes. <laughs> uh, royal cheer, I warrant you. Uh, no, not that, if money and the season can yield it. 
How do you? What's the news? Well, Sibiades is banished. Hear you of it. Sibiades <laughs> banished? Don't do so. Be sure of it. How? How? I, I pray you, upon what? My worthy friends, uh, will you draw near? I'll tell you more anon. Here's a noble feast toward. <laughs> Oh, this is the old man still. Will told, will told. It, it does, but time will, and so. I do conceive. Uh, each man to his stool, with that spur as he would to the lip of his mistress, your diet shall be in all places alike. Make not a city feast of it, to let the meat cool ere we can agree upon the first place. Sit, sit, the gods require our thanks. <clears throat> you great benefactors sprinkle our society with thankfulness for your own gifts make yourselves praised but reserve still to give lest your deities be despised lend to each man enough that one need not lend to another for were your godheads to borrow of men men would forsake the gods make the meat be beloved more than the man that gives it let no assembly of 20 be without a score of villains if or sit 12 women at the table, let a dozen of them be as they are. The rest of your fees, O gods, the senators of Athens, together with the common lag of people, what is amiss in them, you gods, make suitable for destruction. For these, my present friends, as they are to me nothing, so in nothing bless them, and to nothing they are welcome. Uncover dogs and lap! <laughs> What does his lordship, does his lordship mean? mean? I know I not. Know not. May you a better feast never behold, you not of mouth friends. Smoke and lukewarm water is your perfection. This is Timon's last, who stuck and spangled with your flatteries, washes it off and sprinkles in your faces your reeking villainy. Ah! <laughs> Live loathed and long, most smiling, smooth, detested parasites, courteous destroyers, affable wolves, meek bears, you fools of fortune, trencher friends, times flies, cap and knee slaves, vapors and minute jacks of man and beast, the infinite malady, crust you quite o'er. What? Dost thou go? Soft, take thy physic first, thou too, oh, and thou. Stay, I will lend thee money, borrow none. Yeah. Oh. What, all in motion? Henceforth be no feast, whereat a villain's not a welcome guest. Burn house, sink Athens, henceforth hated be of time and man and all humanity. Well, how now, my lords? You know the quality of Lord Timon's fury? Oh, Bush, did you see my cap? Oh. I have lost my gown. He's but a mad lord and not but humor sways him. He gave me a jewel the other day and now he has beat it out of my hat. Did you see my jewel? Did you see my cap? Oh, here it is. Oh. Here lies my gown. Let's make no stay. Lord Timon's mad. I feel it upon my bones. One day he gives us diamonds, the next day stones. Let me look back upon thee. O thou wall that girdles in these wolves, dive in the earth and fence not Athens. Matrons turn incontinent, obedience fail in children. Slaves and fools pluck the grave wrinkled senate from the bench and minister in their steads. To general filths, convert the instant green virginity. Do it in your parents' eyes. Bankrupts hold fast rather than render back out with your knives and cut your trusters' throats. Bound servants, steal. Large-handed robbers your grave masters are and pill by law. Made to thy master's bed, thy mistress is of the brothel. Son of sixteen, pluck the line crutch from thy old limping sire and with it beat out his brains. Piety and fear, religion to the gods, peace, justice, truth, domestic awe, night rest and neighborhood, instruction, manners, mysteries and trades, degrees, observances, customs and laws, decline to your confounding contraries, and let confusion live. 
plagues incident to men, your, po your potent and infectious fevers keep on Athens, ripe for stroke. Thou cold sciatica, cripple our senators, that their limbs may halt as lamely as their manners. Lust and liberty creep in the minds and marrows of our youth that against the stream of virtue they may strive and drown themselves in riot. Itches, blains, so all the Athenian bosoms and their crop be general leprosy. Breath, infect breath at that their society as their friendship may be merely poison. Nothing I'll bear from thee but nakedness, thou detestable town. Take thou that too with multiplying bands. Time and will to the woods where he shall find the unkindness beast more kinder than mankind. The gods confound, hear me, you good gods all. The Athenians both within and out that wall. They grant as time and grows, his hate may grow to the whole race of mankind, high and low. Amen. Well, here you, Master Steward. Oh, where's our master? Are we undone, cast off, nothing remaining? Alack, my fellows, what should I say to you? Let me be recorded by the righteous gods. I am as poor as you. Oh, such a house broken. So noble a master fallen, all gone, and not one friend to take his fortune by the arm and go along with him. As we do turn our backs from our companion thrown into his grave, so his familiars to his buried fortune slink all away, leave their false vows with him like empty purses picked, and his poor self, a dedicated beggar to the air with his disease of all shunned poverty, walks like contempt alone. A more of our fellows. All broken implements of a ruined house. Hmm. Good fellows all. The latest of my wealth I'll share amongst you. Whenever we shall meet, for time and sake, let's yet be fellows. Let's shake our heads and say, twere a knell unto our master's fortunes. We have seen better days. Let's each take some. Hmm? Nay, <laughs> but out all your hands, not one word more. Thus part we rich in sorrow, parting poor. Oh, the fierce wretchedness that glory brings. Who would not wish to be more from wealth exempt since riches put to misery and contempt? Who would be so mocked with glory or to live with but a dream of friendship to have his pomp and all what state compounds only painted like his varnished friends? Poor honest Lord. Who brought Poor honest Lord brought low by his own heart, undone by goodness. Strange, unusual blood when man's worst sin is, he does too much good. Who then dares to be half so kind again? For bounty that makes gods do still, near, still more men. My dearest Lord, blessed to be most accursed, rich only to be wretched. Thy great fortunes are made thy chief afflictions. Alas, kind Lord, he's flung into rage from his ingrateful seat of monstrous friends, nor has he with him to supply his life or that which can command it. I'll follow him and inquire him out. I'll ever serve his mind with my best will. Whilst I have gold, I'll be his steward still. Blessed breeding sun, draw from the earth rotten humidity. Below thy sister's orb infect the air. Twinned brothers of one womb whose procreation, residence, and birth scarce is dividend. Touch them with several fortunes. The greater scorns the lesser. Not nature, to whom all sores lay siege, can bear great fortune, but by contempt of nature. Raise me this beggar, and deny that Lord the Senator shall bear contempt hereditary, the beggar native honor. 
It is the pastor lards the brother's sides, the want that makes him lean. Who dares? Who dares in purity of manhood stand upright and say, this man's a flatterer? If one be, so are they all. For every grise of fortune is smoothed by that elbow. The learned pate ducks to the golden fool. All's obloquy. There's nothing level in our cursed natures but direct villainy. Therefore be abhorred all feasts, societies, and throngs of men. Assemble, assemble, yea, himself, time and disdains. Destruction, fang mankind. Earth, yield me roots. <clears throat> Who seeks for better of thee, sauce his palate with thy most operant poison. What is here? Gold, yellow, glittering, precious gold. Oh gods, I am no idle votarist. Roots, you clear heavens. Thus much of this will make my black, white, foul, fair, wrong, right, base, noble, old, young, coward, valiant. Oh, you gods, why this? What this, you gods? Why? This will lug your priests and servants from your sides, pluck stout men's pillows from below their heads. This yellow slave will knit and break religions, bless the accursed, make the whore leprosy adored, place thieves and give them title, knee, and approbation with senators on the bench. This it is that makes the wappened widow wed again. She whom the spittle house and ulcer ulcerous sores would cast the gorge at. This embalms and spices to the April day again. Come, damned earth, thou common whore of mankind that puts odds amongst the rout of nations. I will make thee do thy right nature. Oh, the drum, thou art quick, but yet I'll bury thee. Thou go, strong thief, when gouty keepers of thee cannot stand. Nay, stay they out for earnest. What art thou there? Speak. A beast, as thou art, the canker gnaw thy heart for making, for showing me again the eyes of man. What is thy name? Is man so hateful to thee that thou art thyself a man? I am misanthropos and hate mankind. For, for thy part, I do wish thou wert a dog that I might love thee something. I know thee well, but in thy fortunes am unlearned and strange. I know thee too. More than I than that I know thee, I not desire to know. Follow thy drum with man's blood, paint the ground, ghouls, ghouls, religious cannons, civil laws are cruel. And what should war be? This fell whore of thine hath in her more destruction than thy sword, for all her cherubim look. Oh, thy lips rot off. No, oh, I will not kiss thee. Then the rot returns to thine own lips again. How came the noble time in this change? Oh, as the moon does, by wanting light to give, but then renew, I could not like the moon. There were no sons to borrow of. Noble Timon, what friendship may I do thee? None, but to maintain my opinion. What is it, Timon? Promise me friendship, but perform none. If thou wilt not promise, the gods plague thee, for thou art a man. If thou dost perform, confound thee, for thou art a man. I have heard in some sort of thy miseries. Oh, thou sawst them when I had prosperity. I see them now. Then was a blessed time. As thine is now held with a brace of harlots. Is this the Athenian minion whom the world voiced so regardfully? Art thou to Mandra? Yes. Be a whore still. They love thee not that use thee. Give them diseases, leaving with thee their lust. Make use of thy salt hours. Season the slaves for tubs and baths. Bring down rose-cheeked youth for, to the tub fast and the diet. Hang thee, monster! Pardon him, sweet Tamandra, for his wits are drowned and lost in his calamities. I have but little gold of late brave time, and the want thereof doth daily make revolt in my penurious band. I have heard and grieved how cursed Athens, mindless of thy worth, forgetting thy great deeds when neighbor states, but for thy sword and fortune, trod upon them. I prithee, beat thy drum and get thee gone. I am thy friend, and pity thee, dear Timon. How dost thou pity him whom thou dost trouble? I had rather be alone. 
Why, fare thee well. Here is some gold for thee. Now keep it. I cannot eat it. When I have laid proud Athens on a heap. Wardst thou? Wardst thou against Athens? I, I time in and have cause. Oh, the gods confound them all in thy conquest, oh, and thee after when thou hast conquered. Why me, Timon? That by killing of villains thou wast born to conquer my country. Put up thy gold. Go on, go on. Here, here, here. Here's gold for thee. Hast thou gold yet? I'll take the gold thou givest me, not all thy counsel. Dost thou, or dost thou not? Heaven's curse upon thee. Give us some gold, good Timon. Enough to make a whore forswear her trade, and to make whores abroad. Hold up, you sluts, your aprons mountained. You're not oathable, though I know you'll swear, terribly swear into strong shudders and to heavenly agues, the immortal gods that, that hear you. Spare your oaths, I'll trust you to your conditions. Be whores still. Well, more gold, what then? Belief that will do anything um, for gold. Consumptions. So in the hollow bones of man, strike their sharp shins and mar men's spurring. Crack the lawyer's voice that he may never more false title plead, nor sound his quillets shrilly. Whore the flamen that scolds against the quality of flesh and not believes himself. Down with the nose, down with it flat, take the bridge quite away of him that his particular to foresee smells from the general wheel. Make curled pate ruffians bald and let the unscarred braggarts of the war derive some pain from you. Plague all that your activity may defeat and quell the source of all erection. There's more gold. Do you damn others and let this damn you and ditches grave you all. More counsel with more money bound his time and more whore, more mischief first. I've given you earnest. Strike, strike up the drum towards Athens. Farewell, Timon. If I thrive well, I'll visit thee again. If I hope well, I'll never see thee more. I never did thee harm. Yes, thou spokest well of me. Callest thou that harm? Men daily find it. Get thee away. And take thy beagles with thee. But we offend him. Strike! That nature being sick of man's unkindness should yet be hungry. Common mother, thou whose womb unmeasurable and infinite breast teems and feeds all, whose self say metal, whereof thy proud child, arrogant man, is puffed, yield him who all the human sons do hate from forth thy plenteous bosom, one poor root. And sear thy fertile and conceptious womb, and let it no more bring an out ungrateful man. Oh, a root, dear thanks. <sighs> more man, plague, plague. I was directed hither. <laughs> Men report, though dost thou dost affect my manners and dost use them. Tis them, because thou dost not keep a dog whom I would imitate. Consumption, catch thee. This is in thee a nature but infected, a poor unmanly melancholy sprung from change of future. Why this spade? Why this place? Thy flatterers yet wear silk, drink wine, lie soft, hug their diseased perfumes, and have forgot that Timon ever was. Shame not these woods by putting on the cunning of a carper. Be thou a flatterer now and seek to thrive by that which has undone thee. Hinge thy knee, and let his very breath whom thou'lt observe blow off thy cap. Praise his most vicious strain, and call it mm, excellent. Thou wast told thus, thou gavest thine ears like tapsters that bade welcome to knaves and all approachers. Tis most just that thou turn rascal. Hast thou wealth again? Rascals should have it. <laughs> do, not assume, do not assume my likeness. Uh, were I like thee, I'd throw away myself. Thou hast cast away thyself, being like thyself. A madman so long, now a fool. What, thou think that the bleakst air, thy boisterous chamberlain, will put thy shirt on warm? Will these moist trees that have outlived the eagle page thy heels and skip when thou point'st out? 
Will the cold brook, candied with ice, thy morning taste to cure thy overnight surfeit? Call the creatures whose naked natures live in all the spite of wreckful heaven, whose bare unhoused trunks to the conflicting elements exposed answer mere nature, bid them flatter thee. Ho oh, ho! Thou shalt find. A fool of thee, depart. I love thee better now than e'er I ever did. Oh, I hate thee worse. Why? Thou flatterest misery. I flatter not, but say thou art a caitiff. Why dost thou seek me out? <laughs> to vex thee. Always a villain's office or a fool's. Dost please thyself in it? Aye. What, a knave too? <sighs> if, thou didst put this sour, if thou didst put this sour cold habit on to castigate thy pride, twere well, but Thou dost it enforcedly. Thou must be courtier again, wert thou not, beggar. Willing misery outlives in certain pomp is crowned before. The one is filling still, never complete. The other, at high wish, best state, contentless, hath a distracted and most wretched being, worse than the worst, content. Uh, Thou should desire us to die being miserable. Not by his breath that is more miserable. Thou art a slave whom fortune's tender arm with flavor, with favor never clasped, but bred a dog. Hadst thou like us from our first swath proceeded to the sweet degrees that this brief world affords to such as may the passive drugs of it freely command, thou wouldst have plunged thyself in general riot melted down thy youth in different beds of lust, and never learned the icy precepts of respect, but followed the sugared game before thee. But myself, who had the world as my confectionery, the mouths, the tongues, the eyes, and hearts of men at duty, more than I could frame employment, that numberless upon me stuck as leaves do on the oak, have with one winter's brush fell from their boughs, and left me open bear for every storm that blows. I do bear this that never knew but better is some burden. Thy nature did commence in sufferance. Time hath made thee hard in it. Why shouldst thou hate men? They never flattered thee. What hast thou given? If thou hadst not been born the worst of men, thou hadst been a knave and flatterer. Art thou proud yet? I, that I am not thee. I, that I was not prodigal. I, that I am one now. For all the wealth I have shut up in thee, I give thee to leave to hang it. Get thee gone. That the whole life of Athens were in this. Thus would I eat it. Here, I will mend thy feast. First mend my company, take away thyself. So shall I mend mine own by the lack of thine. Mm, Tis not well mended, so it is but botched. If not, I would it were. What wouldst thou have to Athens? Hmm? Thee, thither, in a whirlwind. If thou wilt, tell them there, I have gold. Look, look, so I have. Ah, here is no use for gold. The best and truest, for here it sleeps. It does no hired harm. Where liest thou nights, Timon? Under that's above me. Where feedst thou a day's Apamantus? Ah, where my stomach finds meat. <laughs> Rather, where I eat it. What things in the world can thou near compare to thy flatterers? Women nearest, but men. Oh, men are the things themselves. What wouldst thou do with the world, Apamantus, if it lay in thy power? Ah. Uh. Give it to the beasts that it be rid of the men. Wouldst thou have thyself fall in the confusion of men and remain a beast with the beasts? Aye, Timon. <laughs> a beastly ambition with the gods grant thee attain to. If thou wert the lion, the fox would beguile thee. If thou wert the lamb, the fox would eat thee. If thou wert the fox, the lion would suspect thee. When peradventure thou wert accused by the ass, if thou wert the ass, thy dullness would torment thee, and still thou livest but as breakfast to the wolf. If thou wert the wolf, thy greediness would afflict thee, and oft thou should hazard thy life for thy dinner. Wert thou the unicorn, hmm? 
pride and wrath would confound thee and make thine own self the conquest of thy fury. Wert thou a bear, thou wouldst be killed by the horse. Wert thou a horse, thou wouldst be seized by the leopard. Wert thou a leopard, thou wert germane to the lion, and the spots of thy kindred were jurors on thy life. All thy safety were remotion, and thy, thy defense absence. What beast could thou be that were not subject to a beast? And what a beast art thou already that seest not thy loss in transformation? If thou couldst please me with speaking to me, thou mightst have hit upon it here. The commonwealth of Athens is become a forest of beasts. How, has the ass broke the wall that thou art out of the city? Uh -huh. Yonder comes a poet and a painter. Oh. A plague of company light upon thee. I will fear to catch it and give way. When I know not what else to do, I'll see thee again. When there is nothing living but thee, thou shalt be welcome. <laughs> I'd rather be a beggar's dog than Apamantus. Thou art the cap of all the fools alive. Would thou wert clean enough to spit upon? A plague upon thee, thou art too bad to curse. All villains that do stand by thee are pure. There is no leprosy but what thou speak'st. If I name thee, I'll beat thee, but I should infect my hands. I would my tongue could rot them off. Away, thou issue of a mangy dog. Collar does kill me that thou art alive. I swoon to see thee. Would thou wast burst! Away, thou tedious rogue! I am sorry I shall lose a stone by thee! Don't! Beast! Slave! Toad! Rogue! 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 Oh! I am sick of this false world and will love not, but even the mere necessities upon then. Time and presently prepare thy grave. Lie where the light foam of the sea may beat thy gravestone daily and make thine epitaph that death in me at others' lives may laugh. Oh, the sweet king killer and dear divorce twixt natural son and sire, thou bright defiler of Hymen's purest bed, thou valiant Mars, thou ever young, fresh loved and delicate wooer whose blush the thaw, the consecrated snow that lies on Dian's lap, thou visible God that soldierest close impossibilities and makes them kiss that speaks with every tongue to every purpose. Oh, thou touch of hearts, think thy slave man rebels, and by, and by thy virtue set them into confounding odds that beasts may have the world in empire. Would twere so, but not till I'm dead, I'll say the hast, the gold, thou will be thronged to shortly. Thronged to? Aye. Thy back, I prithee. Ha, live? and love thy misery. Long live so, and so die. I am quit. More things like men. Eat, Timon, and pour them. Oh, you gods. Is yon despised and ruinous man, my lord, full of decay and failing? O oh, monument and wonder of good deeds evilly bestowed, what an alteration of honor as desperate want made. Would viler thing upon the earth and friends who can bring noblest minds to basest ends. How rarely does it meet with time's guise when man was wished to love his enemies. Grant I may ever love and rather woo those who would mischief me more than those that do. He's caught me in his eye, I will uh, present mine honest grief unto him, and as my Lord still serve him with my life. Uh, my dearest master. Away, what art thou? Have you forgotten me, sir? I just ask that. I have forgot all men. Then if thou grantst thou art a man, I have forgot thee. An honest poor servant of yours. Then I know thee not. I never had honest man about me. I, all I kept were knaves to serve and meat to villains. The gods are witness. Never did poor Stuart wear a truer grief for this, his undone lord, than mine eyes for you. What dost thou weep? I come nearer. Then I love thee because thou art a woman and disclaims flinty mankind whose eyes do never give but thorough lust and laughter. Pity sleeping, strange times that weep with laughing, not with weeping. I need you to know me, good my lord, to 
accept my grief, and whilst this poor wealth lasts, you entertain me as your steward still. I had a steward. So true, so just, so, and now so comfortable. It almost turns my dangerous nature wild. Let me behold thy face. Surely this man was born of women, of woman. Forgive my general and acceptless rashness, you pe perpetual sober gods. I do proclaim one honest man. Mistake me not, but one. No more, I pray. But he's a steward. How fain would I have hated all mankind, and thou redeemst thyself. But all, save thee, I fell with curses. Methought, methinks thou art more honest now than wise, for by oppressing and betraying me, thou mightst have sooner got another service. For many so arrive at second masters upon their first lord's neck. But tell me true, for I must ever doubt, though ne'er so sure. Is not thy kindness subtle, covetous, if not a usuring kindness, and as rich as, as rich men deal, deal gifts, expecting in return twenty for one? No, oh, my most worthy master, in whose breast doubt and suspect, alas, are placed too late. You should have feared else, feared false times when you did feast. Suspect still comes where an estate is leased. That which I show heaven knows is merely love, duty, and a zeal to your unmatched kind. Care of your food and living and belief it, my most honored Lord, for any benefit that points to me, either in hope or present, I'd exchange for this one wish, that you had power and wealth to requite me by making rich yourself. <laughs> to so... Thou singly honest man here, take the gods out of my misery, has, has sent thee treasure. Go live rich and happy, but thus conditioned, thou shalt build from men, hate all, curse all, show charity to none, but let the famished flesh slide from the bone ere thou relieve the beggar. Give to dogs what thou deniest to men, let prisons swallow them, debts wither them to nothing be men like blasted woods and may diseases lick up their false bloods and so farewell and oh, let me stay let me stay and comfort you my well, man if, if thou hatest curses stay not fly while thou still art, art blessed and free ne'er ne'er see thou man and let me ne'er see thee as i took note of the place it cannot be far where he abides. Uh, what's to be thought of him? Does the rumor hold for true that he's so full of gold? Certain. Alcibiades reports it. Phrenia and Tamandra had gold of him. He likewise enriched poor straggling soldiers with great quantity. Tis said he gave unto his steward a mighty sum. <gasps> Then this breaking of his has been but a try for his friends. Nothing else. You shall see him a palm in Athens again and flourish with the highest. Therefore, tis not amiss, we tender our loves to him in this supposed distress of his. It will show honestly in us and is very likely to load our purposes with what they travail for if it be a just and true report that goes of, of his having. Uh, what have you now to present unto him? Uh, nothing at this time but my visitation. Only I will promise him an excellent peace. I must serve him so too. Uh, tell him of an intent that's coming toward him. Mm. Good as the best. Mm. Promising is the very air of the time. It opens the eyes of expectation. Performance is ever the duller for his act, and but in the plainer and simpler kind of people, the deed of saying is quite out of use. To promise is most courtly and fashionable. Performance is a kind of will or testament which argues a great sickness in his judgment that makes it. Excellent workman. Thou canst not paint a man so bad as is thyself. 
I am thinking what I shall say I have provided for him. It must be a pers personating of himself. Oh, a satire against the softness of prosperity with a discovery of the infinite flatteries that follow youth and opulency. Hmm? Must thou needs stand for a villain in thine own work? That thou whip thine own faults in other men? Do so, I have gold for thee. Now, let's seek him. Then do we sin against our own estate when we may profit meet and come too late. Oh. True. Mm. When the day serves before black cornered night, find what thou wants to buy free and offered light. Come. I'll meet you at the turn. What a God's gold that he is worshipped in a baser temple than is than where swine feed. Tis thou that rigs the bark and plows the foam, a settled admired reverence and a slave. To thee be worship and thy saints for I be crowned with plagues that thee alone obey. Fit I'll meet him. Oh, hail, worthy Timon. Our late noble master. Oh, have I once lived to see two honest men? Oh, sir. Having often of your open bounty tasted, hearing you were retired, your friends fallen off, whose thankless natures, oh, abhorred spirits, not all the whips of heaven are large enough. What to you? whose star-like nobleness gave life and influence to their whole being. I am wrapped and cannot cover the monstrous bulk of this ingratitude with any size of words. Let it go naked. Men may see it the better. You that are honest by being what you are make them best seen and known. <laughs> he and myself have travailed in the great shower of your gifts and sweetly felt it. Aye, you are honest men. We are hither come to offer you our service. Mm, most honest men. Why, how shall I requite you? Uh, can you eat roots and drink cold water? No? Uh, what we can do, we'll do. To do you service? Mm, you're honest men. You've heard that I have gold. I'm sure you have. Speak the truth. You're honest men. So it is said, my noble lord. But therefore came not my friend, nor I. Oh, good honest men. Thou drawst a counterfeit. Best in all Athens. Thou'rt indeed the best. Thou counterfeits most lively. So, so, my lord. E'en so, sir, as I say. And for thy fiction, why, thy verse swells with stuff so fine and smooth that thou art even natural in thine art. But for all this, my honest natured friends, I must needs say you have a little fault. Mary, tis not monstrous in you, neither wish I you take much pains to mend. Oh, beseech your honor to make it known to us. Oh, you'll take it ill. Most thankfully, my lord. Will you indeed? Oh, doubt it not, worthy lord. Well, there's never a one of you but trusts a knave that mightily deceives you. Do we, lord? Aye. And you hear him cog, see him dissemble, know his gross patchery, love him, feed him, keep him in your bosom, yet remain assured that he's a made-up villain. I know none such, my lord. Nor I. Look you, I love you well. I'll, I'll give you gold. Rid me these villains from your companies. Hang them or stab them, uh, drown them in a, in a draught. Confound them by some course and come to me. I'll give you gold enough. Uh, name them, my lord. Uh, let's know them. Mm. You that way and you this, but two in company, each man apart, all single and alone, yet an arch villain keeps him company. If where thou art, two villains shall not be, come not near him. If thou wouldst not reside but where one villain is, then him abandon. Hence, pack, here's gold. You came for gold, you slaves. You have work for me, there's payment. Hence, you are an alchemist. Make gold of that. Out, rascal dogs! It is in vain you would speak with Timon, for he is set 
so only to himself that nothing but himself, which looks like man, is friendly with him. Bring us to his cave. It is our part and promise to the Athenians to speak with Timon. At all times alike, men are still, are not still the same. Twas time in Greece that framed him thus, time with his fair hand, offering the fortunes of his former days. The former man may make him, bring us to him, and chance it as it may. Well, here is his cave. Peace and content be here. Uh, Lord Timon, Timon, look out and speak to your friends. The Athenians by two of their most rever uh, reverend senate get greet thee. Speak to them, noble time. Son that comforts burn. Speak and be hanged, for each true word a blister, and each false be as cantharizing to the root of the tongue, consuming it with speaking. A worthy Timon. Of none but such as you and you of Timon. The senators of Athens greet thee, Timon. Oh, oh, I thank them, and would send them back the plague, could I but catch it for them. Oh, Forget what we are sorry for ourselves in thee. The senators, with one consent of love, entreat thee back to Athens, who have thought on special dignities which vacant lie for thy best use and wearing. They confess toward these forgetfulness too general gross, which now the public body with doth seldom play the recanter, feeling in itself a lack of time and aid, has sense with all of its own falling, restraining to aid Timon and sent forth to us to make their sour render, together with a recompense, recompense more fruitful than their offense can weigh down by thy dram. I, even such heaps and sums of love and wealth, as shall to thee blot out what wrongs were theirs, and write in thee the figures of their love, ever to read them thine. Oh, you witch me in it. Surprise me to the very brink of tears. Lend me a fool's heart and a woman's eyes, and I'll beweep these comforts, worthy senators. Therefore, so please thee to return with us, and of our Athens, thine and ours, to take the captainship. Thou shalt be met with thanks, allowed with absolute power, and thy good name live with authority. So sh soon shall we drive back of Alcibiades the approach is wild, who like a boar too savage doth root up his country's peace. And shakes his threatening sword against the walls of Athens. Therefore time in- Well, sir, I will. Therefore I will, sir, thus. If Alcibiades kill my countrymen, let Alcibiades know this of Timon, that Timon cares not. But if he sack fair Athens and take our goodly aged men by the beards, giving our holy virgins to the stain of contumelious, beastly, mad-brained war, then let him know and tell him Timon speaks it. In pity of our aged and our youth, I cannot choose but tell him that I care not and let him take at the worst, for their knives care not, while you have throats to answer. For myself, there's not a whittle in the unruly camp, but I do prize it at my love before the reverendest throat in Athens. So I leave you to the protection of the prosperous gods as thieves to keepers. Hey, not, all's in vain. Why, I was writing my, of my epitaph. It will be seen tomorrow. My long sickness of health and living now begins to mend and nothing brings me all things. Go, live still, be Alcibiades, your plague, you his, and so last long enough. We speak in vain. Yet, yet I love my country and I'm not one that rejoices in the common rack as common brute doth put it. That's well spoke. And commend me to my loving countrymen. These words become your lips as they pass through them. Mm. And enter in our ears like triumphers in their applauding gates. C commend me to them and tell them that to ease them of their griefs, their fears of hostile strokes, their aches, losses, their pangs of love with other incident throws that nature's fragile vessel doth sustain in life's uncertain voyage. I will some uh, kindness do them. I'll teach them to prevent wild Alcibiades' wrath. I like this well, he will return again. Mm -hmm. I have a tree which grows here in my clothes that mine own use invites me to cut down, and shortly I must fell it. 
tell my friends, tell Athens in the sequence of degree from high to low throughout that whoso please to stop affliction, let them take his haste, come hither ere my tree hath felt the ax and hang himself. I pray you do my greeting. Trouble him no further, thus you still shall find him. Come not to me again, but say to Athens, Timon hath made his everlasting mansion upon the beached verge of the salt flood, who once a day with his embossed froth the turbulent surge shall cover. Thither come, and let my gravestone be your oracle. Lips, let four words go by, and language end. What is amiss? Plague and infection mend. Graves only be men's works, and death their gain. Son, hide thy beams. Timon hath done his reign. His discontents are unremovably coupled to nature. Our hope in him is dead. Let us return and strain what other means is left unto us in our dear peril. It requires swift foot. Thou hast painfully discovered our files as full as they report. I've spoke the least. Besides, his expedition promises present approach. We stand much hazard if they bring not Timon. I met a courier, one mine ancient friend, whom, though in general part we were opposed, yet our old love made particular force and made us speak like friends. This man was writing from Alcibiades to Timon's cave with letters of entreaty, which imported his fellowship in the cause against your city, in part for his sake moved. Here come our brothers. No talk of Timon, nothing of him expect. The enemy's drum is heard and fearful scoring does choke the air with dust. In and prepare. Ours is the fall, I fear. Our foes, the snare. By all description, this should be the place. Who's here? Speak, ho! No answer? What's this? Timon is dead, who hath outstretched his span. Some beast, read this, there does not live a man. Dead, sure, and, and this his grave. What's on this tomb? I, I cannot read the, the character I'll take with wax. Our captain hath in every figure skill, an aged interpreter, though young in days. Before proud Athens, he set down by this, whose fall the mark of his ambition is. Sound to this coward and lascivious town our terrible approach. Till now, you have gone on and filled the time with all licentious measure, making your wills the scope of justice. Till now, myself and such as slept within the shadow of your power have wandered with our traversed arms and breathed our sufferance vainly. Now, the time is flush when crouching marrow in the bearer strong cries of itself no more. Now, breathless wrong shall sit and pant in your great chairs of ease and Percy insolence shall break his wind with fear and horrid flight. Noble and young, when thy first griefs were but a mere conceit, ere thou hadst power or we had cause of fear, we sent to thee to give thy rages balm, to wipe out our ingratitude with loves above their quantity. So did we woo, transform Timon to our city's love by humble message and by promised means. We were not all unkind, nor all deserve the common stroke of war. These walls of ours were not erected by their hands from whom you have received your grief, nor are they such that these great towers, trophies, and schools should fall for private faults in them. 
nor are they living who were the motives that you first went out. Shame that they wanted cunning in excess hath broke their hearts. March, noble Lord, into our city with thy banners spread. By decimation and a tithe death, if thy revenge is hunger for that food, which nature loathes, take thou destined tenth, and by that hazard of spotted dye, let die the spotted. All have not offended. For those that were, it is not square to take on those that are revenge. Crimes like lands are not inherited. Then, dear countrymen, bring in thy ranks, but leave without thy rage. Spare thy Athenian cradle and those kin, which in the bluster of thy wrath must fall with those that have offended. Like a shepherd, approach the fold and call the infected forth, but kill not altogether. What thou wilt, thou rather shalt enforce it with thy smile, than hew it to with thy sword. Set but thy foot against our rampiered gates, and they shall ope. So thou wilt send thy gentle heart before to say thou'd enter friendly. Throw thy glove, or any token of thine honor else, that thou wilt use the wars as thy redress. And now as our confusion, all thy powers shall make their harbor in our town till we have sealed thy full desire. Then there's my glove. Descend and open your uncharged ports. Those enemies of Timon's and mine, own whom you yourselves shall set out for reproof, fall, and no more. And to atone your fears with my more noble meaning, not a man shall pass his quarter or offend the stream of regular justice in your city's bounds, but shall be remedied to your public laws at heaviest answer. Tis most nobly, most nobly spoken. spoken. Descend and keep your words. My noble general, time and is dead, entombed upon the very hem of the sea, and on his gravestone, this in sculpture, which with wax I brought away, whose soft impression interprets for my poor ignorance. Here lies a wretched course of wretched soul bereft. Seek not my name, a plague consume you wicked caitiffs left. Here lie I, Timon, who alive, all living men did hate. Pass by and curse thy fill, but pass and stay not here thy gate. These well express in the, thy latter spirits, though thou abhorrest in us our human griefs, scornest our brains flow, and those are droplets which from niggard nature fall, yet rich conceit taught thee to make vast Neptune, weep for I on thy low grave, on faults forgiven. Dead is noble Timon, of whose memory hereafter more. Bring me into your city, and I will use the olive with my sword. Make war breed peace, make peace stint war, make each prescribe to other as each other's leech. Let our drums strike. All right, everybody, come on back. Good job, good job. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, tune in next Saturday. We'll have another play. Stay tuned. What's it going to be? I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs>